everybody and welcome back to World of Warship Blitz for a down the line video looking at the British cruiser line. So the British only have one tech tree line of ships, it is the cruisers, they have a couple of destroyers, the Campbelltown and the Gallant. Um, it has um, some battleships, five battleships, but they're all premiums. So the main line of British ships is only the cruisers. Um, and we shall start our review with the Tier 2 Weymouth. Mainly because it is the, um, the ship that represents pretty much what the cruiser line will become. Um, it's lightly armoured, it's relatively quick at 25 knots. Fires AP only, it has 6 inch guns, 8 of them scattered around. Um, it is a difficult ship to learn how to play, so if you're starting out and you're in the Weymouth and you're wondering why it's so hard, it's basically because it's optimised for shooting at destroyers, and learning how to shoot at destroyers when you're new is hard. So, um, so the British line does put a lot of people off starting at the Weymouth, um, but do persist and, and try some other lines, learn how to shoot and then come back to it, and you might find that you do a little bit better. The next ship is the, not the Weymouth again, is the Caledon. Now I have played a few more battles in the Caledon than in the Weymouth. I went back and played the Caledon again, mainly because um, I was interested in um, seeing, you know, whether or not it was a, a problem, you know, with me or with the ship. So whereas I have nine battles in the Weymouth, I have 68 in the Caledon. It has a 52% win rate, which you think would be better going back to it um i'm not sure how many of those battles were um were the first time around um now this ship differs from the weymouth it's very much the weymouth with torpedoes if that makes sense so um yeah that's that's pretty much it, it so the torpedoes um they reload in 34 seconds so they're pretty quick but it is tier three so you're up against other ships that also have quick loading torpedoes um, the range of the torpedoes is 5.7, so they're moderate range. Um, the detection of the ship is the same as the Weymouth at 7.2, so, um, yeah, you're well within detection range when you're throwing the torpedoes, so they're sort of more of a point defence weapon or a weapon for, uh, modifying the behaviour of, of destroyers. But what it does do is it gives you a sense, each, each, um, development of the ship is more of a sense of what the British line will become. Um... So yeah, so what it does is it takes the Weymouth and, and adds torpedoes. Now they do ripple fire, which means that you can fire them one at a time, which is nice, but given there's only two tubes aside, they're pretty narrow spread anyway. Tier 4. Now, Tier 4 is probably my worst performing British cruiser. The Deny, because with the Weymouth I could get through it in nine games. Uh, I was stuck with the Deny for a lot longer, for 25, 40% win rate. Um... Interestingly enough, 12% most valuable player, so that's three games out of those uh, 25 um, would have been, I'd have been the most valuable player, but essentially the deny is the um, Caledon um, with uh, slightly longer range guns, so from at just over nine kilometres up from just over eight. Um, it has six of them instead of five, they do slightly more damage, in fact so much slightly more damage that they do the same damage. It has three torpedo tube, three torpedoes per set of tubes, so it has six torpedo tubes per side, two sets of three, a 40 second reload, um, and the same 61 knot speed and 5k, 5.7k of range. It has slightly higher detection at 7.8, and this ship is starting to mix it with tier fives, and it is a fragile cruiser. Um, you uh, you know, it is, when you're learning, you know, this, the Caledon and the, the, the Weymouth are all ships that you're going to struggle with when you're learning to learn how to land shots on those destroyers. But once you know how to land shots on the destroyers, um, this line improves a lot. So the next ship, the next ship, I will go back here because the next ship I do have, um, I've kept the Emerald mainly because um, I had a captain for it. And that captain is being trained up for the um, for some of my premiums. To be fair, so um, some of the battleships have different skills. So the captain's on one of the other ships at the moment, probably the Warspit. Um, so the captains, the 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 battleships have different requirements. And so what I do is I um, the, 
The captain is an emerald captain who I train up to be a battleship. So essentially he's a, he's a premium main captain, if that makes sense. But I keep the emerald around. Um, and the emerald has is basically the deny larger with a few more guns or one more gun. That's seven. But it has smoke. So that's where, um, so the developments, you know, up through the, through the Royal Navy cruiser line, this is the one where they add smoke into the mix. Now smoke makes a big difference or no difference at all, depending on how you use it. Um, basically, um, it's something that you do need to spend a little bit of time getting used to. Um, it's a great way to get out of trouble, but if you always use it to get out of trouble, then you're probably overextending. But the other thing that smoke can really do um, is it gives you an opportunity to engage close in with a battleship or a, a cruiser that would otherwise definitely overmatch you. So I use, I often launch torpedoes from smoke, fire from smoke. Yeah, so smoke is a, is a great, great way of lifting the capability of the ship. Now the ship is a bit larger, so it's a bit of an easier target to hit. It's not very well armoured. Um, it is fast, so it's got goes 32 knots, which sort of is pretty standard from here on in. So 32 and a bit knots is basically the standard of British cruisers, um, the speed of British cruisers from this point forward. It has, um, yeah, as I said, the seven six inch guns. Um, they reload at 7.5 seconds, which is pretty much standard until you get right near the end of the line. Um, for a 10 kilometer range, so it's up almost a K from a 0.9 of a K from the deny. Um, you, your detection is 8.1, so your range increases by 0.9 of a kilometer, but your detection increases by 0.3, so that's pretty good. Um, and you get torpedoes, you get the four times three torpedo tubes, so four sets of three tubes, um, two sets of three on each side, 40.8 second reload, the same as the um, deny, about 3,000 damage, so pretty good, but still the same speed and range, 5.7k range, 61 knots. Um, the next ship is where the line sort of matures, if that makes sense. Each development up until this point adds something. So um, the Weymouth is sort of like the base structure, the Caledon adds torpedoes, the Denai adds a bit more torpedoes and a sort of a, you know, slightly larger ship. The Emerald adds smoke. The Leander is where it all matures. So as you can see from the video here, it's got uh, two sets of turrets at the front, two turrets at the front, two turrets at the back. Um, two guns per turret, eight guns, eight six inch guns, so that's its firepower. Um, it fires 11.07 kilometers. Now it does have the camo on it, which is taking that up slightly. Um, but um, yeah, it does have a, a range increase over, over the Emerald. Um, now at tier six, something else happens, and this will affect all the cruiser stats going forward. And you can see in the equipment module, one of the equipment modules that I have, and this is fairly standard for my British cruisers, is the surface detection minus 10%. So what this does is at this point, um, the detection radius just go right down. So um, in addition, the Leander has the camo, so it has a 6.45 kilometer detection range, which is fantastic. It has a 4.55 um, torpedo range, so it has 100 meters in which it can stealth torp, not that able, being able to judge that is at all possible. Um, but what it means is that um, you can get torpedoes in the water, um, especially if ships coming towards you, um, and have a fairly and, and, and dodge out if you want. Um, the Leander, yeah, it does the 32 knots. Um, it's a great ship to play, I find. It is fairly agile. The all of the British cruisers are agile. Um, I used to have two turning modules, but I've gone for the concealment and it has improved my win rate simply because now I can determine the engagements. And if you pop behind an island and don't shoot, then when you come out the other side, you may actually find that you're concealed again. Um, so to give you a comparison around um, the amount of time I've spent in the Leander, I've played 349 games as opposed to the Emerald where I've played 59. Um, so no other British cruiser has broken 100 except for the Leander. Um, oh no, hold on, I'm reading the wrong stats. Um, yeah, so nothing's broken 200 except for Leander. 
Um, so, and the Emerald, I've actually played 113 games. 59 was the wins. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a good ship for attacking um, destroyers. Um, the, what I find is that you use the torpedo tubes on the side um, as a way to deny the destroyers a particular stretch of ocean, force them to turn a direction and into your guns. And if you watch any of my Leander videos, you'll probably see that in operation. Um, some people don't think the Leander's the best ship in the British line. That would probably go to the Fiji, and I'm tempted to buy the camo for this this little ship here. The Fiji is a fantastic ship. It is basically the Leander, and if you have a look carefully at the guns, turrets, you'll see that there's three guns per turret. So that essentially increases the firepower by 50%. So if we go have a look at the stats, or if I have a look at the stats, because I've got them written out here, um, so the gun range is pretty much the same as Leander. In fact, with that camo, the Leander slightly beats the Fiji, so it's probably got the same gun range. Um, but it does the same damage, um, 552 uh, AP damage. So it's the Leander and the Fiji are very similar, except obviously having uh, four extra guns makes quite a big difference. It does. And the Fiji's a nimble little ship. It's a great little ship. It has all the smoke. It has everything that the Leander has. Um, it has a reload, interestingly, um, on the torpedoes, it has a reload of 38 seconds as opposed to the 44 for the Leander, but it does only have three torpedoes per side. Now you can ripple fire them. So this ship probably struggles the most against battleships. With the Leander, you can get four in a ripple fire. With this, you can only get three. Um, and it is a smaller ocean to nail, but to be honest, you spend most of your time on the guns. Um, so we'll skip the Belfast which is a fantastic cruiser if you get an opportunity to pick it up I'd recommend doing that and we'll go straight to the Edinburgh now the Edinburgh has the same equipment configuration as all my other um, cruisers past tier 6 well until the Neptune uh, something special happens at the Neptune it's, it's, uh, we'll explain when we get there um, so the Edinburgh is um, so probably my highest win rates are with the um, with the Leander at 63. The Fiji's getting up there. I did have a long time getting to learn it. Um, it's 52, and the Edinburgh is 49. But it does have a fairly substantial history of um, of of not performing particularly well. So if I look at my win rates for the latest games, if that makes sense. Um, and I'll just search for the Fiji, and my current new win rate is 57. So, um, so if I only count the games since around about April or May of this year, it's 57%, which is a significantly approved win rate. And if we, um, if we look at the Edinburgh, um, it's gone up from its original 46% win rate up to 53%, so I'm improving there too. Um, I do tend to play a lot of risks and aggressively, so I'm probably not my own friend, and maybe I, what I need to do is add camo into this so that I can see how it would, um, how the camo affects the win rate, because the camo does amazing things to these British ships. Uh, but it increases the main battery firing ranges, it increases the torpedo range, and it decreases the surface detection and increases your maximum traverse speed. Yeah, what's not to like? Oh no, that's the Belfast. No, it's Edinburgh. Uh, let's have a look at the Fiji. Uh, it's the same. Yep, so, um, you know, it basically exacerbates the strength of these ships. Um, so, yeah, no, I'll make a decision about that. Gold is not easy to come by, so I, um, I spend it carefully. But the Edinburgh, fantastic ship, um, very much in the line of the Fiji and the Leander. Um, slightly more powerful guns doing um, 566 instead of 552 damage. 11 kilometre range, slightly increased range. Um, slightly more powerful torpedoes that have a 7.5 kilometre range, so that's that's a great improvement, but it is a bigger ship, it, so its its detection radius is seven point six seven, um, and yeah, it's a um, it's not as manoeuvrable as the Fiji, which isn't quite as manoeuvrable as Leander. So I, you know, I have to say that Leander is probably the the cream of the game, 
the, the cream of the crop. The Neptune. So um, as you can see, my equipment slots are empty. And if you have a look, it's because I have a number of tier nines and I'm having to assess what equipment it is that I buy. And I'm not really particularly keen on mixing and matching. The captain in this, by the way, is the captain I use for the Belfast. Oh no, hold on, the captain for this is this is the Neptune, isn't it? It's the Edinburgh captain I use for the Belfast. So I'm only sort of starting out. I've played a few games um, by... Um, I think I've played I've played uh, nine games, uh, eleven games, um, for four wins. So um, thirty six percent win rate. I mean that's when you're starting out. That's nothing nothing special. I mean my Azuma was well below that, and my um, Baltimore was probably on par. Um, I am learning to try and place it. It is a different game style um, because basically what happens with this ship is that your detection radius goes up from seven point six seven up to nine kilometers now i think the edinburgh has a larger detection range but i think this would benefit from a concealment module when i feel that i'm going to continue down the line enough to put the concealment module into it and spend the silver um but yeah it is it is a bigger ship it doesn't maneuver as well it does not maneuver as well so if i remember what the the edinburgh and the fiji were like without the turning modules this is this reminds me more of uh, the Japanese cruiser line. Um, really, it does struggle, in, or, or even Russian. It just feels very heavy. Um, the guns fire very, very rapidly. 5.5 second reload, down from 7.5 second. It has um, the 12 of them. The dispersion's okay. Um, and it has four sets of uh, torpedo tubes or per side, so... Um, four no two sets of uh four torpedoes per side for four sets overall so that's 16 torpedoes eight out each side they can be ripple fired so this thing can do a lot of damage with torpedoes um it's a real ship to learn and master um the torpedo reload however um for the fact that you've got more torpedoes you have to wait longer for them to come back that jumps to 61 seconds reload time so you're really getting at most probably three or four depending on your positioning shots with full loads of torpedoes out per game um, however the range also jumps to 7.8 kilometers and um, with the concealment module um, probably be quite a significant improvement to the ship maybe even the historical camo but I have to work out still if I like it the final ship we're back into the tech tree for and that is the end, end one now I have played this on the press account um, the Minotaur um, it has stupidly fast firing guns at 3.5 seconds. It has five turrets, each with two six-inch guns. They do fire on a very high arc, so it doesn't feel quite as accurate as the guns of the ships that come previously. Um, the damage per gun is uh, 460 as opposed to 566 to make up for that absolutely insane fire rate. The turret traverses 20 seconds, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do when I elite, you know, the um, the Minotaur, because um, turret traverse seems to, 20 plus 20% turret, turret traverse seems to be a fairly staple for the British cruisers. It again has 16 torpedoes with a 61 second reload, um, and it has a slightly, slightly lower damage count for those torpedoes. Um, so I think a lot of things are making up for that insane firing rate. Um, the range for the torpedoes is the same, and the speed, 62 knots and 7.8 kilometres is the same as the Neptune. Its detection is much better, its base detection is 8.7 as opposed to 9, um, and with some historical camo, which would probably be fairly pricey, and some uh, concealment module, which also is going to be very pricey, that could come down quite nicely. Um, Anyway, those are the British cruiser lines. Um, basically, it is a very much a hunter line. Um, it can survive out on the flanks. Um, you have the maneuverability if you get focused by aircraft. Um, well, the Fiji and above um, seem to have the defensive fire, uh, AA air, air defense alert, which is good. Um, so that does help. And the fact that you're quite maneuverable means that it's a lot of work for the carrier to try and hit you with torpedoes they can do it 
but the more you make them work for it, the less likely they are to continue targeting you if there's other ships that are just so much easier to deal with because there's a lot to do if you're in a carrier. Um, yeah, so the other thing is that they do play quite nicely close in with the main fleet. Just don't be detected first is probably the rule, which is why I've gone with the concealment, because if I can avoid being detected first, I have a great game. And if I am the first ship detected, um, usually it's a really, really bad game. Um, anyway, I hope that was educational and somewhat useful. And if you are going down the British cruiser line, um, you know, jump in. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and if um, otherwise, um, I'm sure there'll be a line out there that you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.